Hello, here again we are with the textbook Nature Matters, readings on life and nature. With this class, let's discuss the question and answers from the chapter Disaster Management. So when I open the textbook at page number 48, you can see the comprehension question in page number 48. The first question is, uh, what are some of the natural disasters India is vulnerable to? Answer, the Indian subcontinent is very vulnerable to droughts, floods, cyclones, earthquakes, landslides, avalanches and forest fires. Among the 36 states and union territories in the country, 22 are prone to disasters. The second question uh, which coastline is prone to cyclone? Answer. The eastern coastline is more prone to cyclones as it is hit by about 80% of the total cyclones generated in the region. In India, cyclones occur usually between April and May and also between October and December. Now the third question that is, uh, define disaster management. Answer. A disaster management is a multidisciplinary area in which a wide range of issues that range from forecasting, warning, evacuation, search and risk, relief, reconstruction and rehabilitation are included. It is also multi-sectoral as it involves administrators, scientists, planners, volunteers and their communities. Now moving on to the fourth question that is, what are cyclones? Answer, the cyclones are large revolving vortices in the atmosphere extending horizontally from 150 to 1000 km and vertically from the surface to 12 to 14 km. Top, uh, tropical cyclones are the worst natural hazards in the tropics. Now moving on to the fifth question. That is, uh, what are the guidelines for disaster mitigation? Answer. The common guidelines for effective mitigation program include pre-disaster mitigation, protection of the natural and the cultural assets of the community, uh, desires and uh, priorities of the community, etc. Any mitigation program must also ensure effective partnership among government, scientific, private sector, NGOs and the community. Now moving on to the sixth question that is, uh, what are the causes of floods? Answer. Floods can be caused by natural, ecological or anthropogenic factors, either individually or as a combined result. Anthropogenic activities such as uh, deforestation and a shifting cultivation can also contribute to floods. Now moving on to the seventh question that is, mention two flood mitigation measures. Answer. Improvement of uh, flow conditions in the channel and anti-erosion measures. Reservoirs for impounding monsoon flows to be released in a regular manner after the peak flood flow passes. Maintaining wetlands and uh, improved drainage. Now moving on to the eighth question. Uh, which are the most destructive natural hazards? Answer. Earthquakes are considered to be one of the most destructive natural hazards. The impact of this phenomenon occurs with so little warning that it is almost impossible to make uh, preparations against the damages and uh, collapse of building. Now the ninth question. Which parts of India suffer from adverse floods? Answer. The lower plain regions of India, in particular Bihar, Uttar Pradesh and the West Bengal in respect of the Ganga, suffers from adverse floods. Assam suffers from adverse floods because of the river Brahmaputra. 
Now the last question, the tenth question. How can we minimize the loss and a destruction from natural disasters? Answer. A disasters cannot be totally prevented. However, early warning systems, careful planning and preparedness on part of the vulnerable community would help in minimizing the loss of life and property due to these disasters. Now we will move on to the discussion of the essay questions. Uh, usually we used to do, I mean, I used to include almost all the paragraph questions within the essay itself. But uh, today I've got to do things in a different way because this is a long chapter. So it's very difficult for me to include all, all the paragraph questions within the essay itself. So what I do is I just will include only one paragraph question within the essay. And all the other paragraph questions will be dealt after we discuss the essay. So, we will discuss the paragraph question. So, second paragraph question is the essay. We will discuss the paragraph question. So, let's uh, read the question essay questions. First one is. Uh, write in detail about the cyclone mitigation measures. Second essay question is, comment on the role of NGOs in a Gujarat earthquake relief. Third question, a uh, difference between disaster management and disaster mitigation with an example. So the first paragraph of the essay, the introduction paragraph. Our Earth has suffered a great deal from recurring natural disasters that have repeatedly put a strain on people's lives. A natural disaster is a sudden event, an accident or a natural havoc that causes great extents of damage or multiple deaths. Over these past years, numerous amount of these disasters have been seen happening all around the world. A natural disaster is unforeseen unforeseen, uh, severe and uh, immediate. Natural disasters include cyclones, earthquakes, floods, drought, landslides, avalanches, flash floods, severe thunderstorms, hail, etc. Now we will move on to the second paragraph of the essay. The second paragraph of this essay is uh, answer of paragraph question number two from the textbook. So this is the only paragraph I have included within the essay. So the paragraph question number two is, what are the features of disaster management? Answer, a disaster management or mitigation is a type of long term pre-disaster planning which involves sustained expenditures on structural and non-structural efforts to reduce or eliminate future risk. Mitigation plans and activities are in practice usually medium to long term and mitigation is the cornerstone of emergen sorry, emergency management since it is an example where thinking ahead pays off in the long run. Terminologically, mitigation is related to two other concepts of long-term planning, reconstruction and preparedness. Reconstruction means repair or rebuilding, and preparedness means getting ready to practicing to respond. Mitigation means to lessen the effects or take action toward the building and putting together of certain structures and plans so that the impact of any future disaster will be ameliorated or eliminated if possible. Some simple examples of mitigation activities that an emergency manager might do include promoting flood insurance, uh, urging the structural redesign of buildings, raising or moving homes from flood zones, or just making sure there are appropriate building codes within certain communities. Mitigation refers to all actions taken before a disaster to reduce its impacts. Mitigation activities fall broadly into two categories, 
with structural mitigation and non-structural mitigation. Structural mitigation involves the construction projects which reduce economic and social impacts. Non-structural mitigation involves the policies and practices to raise awareness of hazard or encourage developments to reduce the impact of disasters. Various mitigation activities include reviewing building codes and building use regulations, vulnerability analysis updates, zoning and land use management and planning, implementing preventative health measures, Educating businesses and the public on simple measures they can take to reduce loss or injury. For instance, uh, fastening bookshelves, water haters, and uh, filing cabinets to wall to keep them from falling during earthquakes. Hazard mapping, adoption and uh, enforcement of land use and zoning practices implementing and enforcing building codes, flood plan mapping, reinforced their torrent or safe rooms, buying of electrical cables to prevent ice buildup, raising of homes in flood-drawn areas, disaster mitigation public awareness programs, insurance programs. Mitigation activities should incorporate the measurement and uh, assessment of the evolving risk environment. Activities may include the creation of a comprehensive, proactive tools that have desired whether to focus funding and the efforts in risk reduction. Now we will move on to the third paragraph of the essay. Disaster in India is not a new phenomenon. It has witnessed a devastating natural catastrophe in a recent past like droughts, floods, cyclones, earthquakes, landslides, etc. And as a result, millions of people each year have been affected with a varied impact. 26 January 2001 earthquake was an unprecedented calamity for the state of Gujarat. The state government immediately conceptualized a comprehensive inhabitation and a reconstruction program which addressed all important concerns that arose from the earthquakes starting from immediate relief, economic rehabilitation, livelihood restoration, as well as long-term capacity building of all stakeholders to fight future disasters. The government prepared Gujarat earthquake reconstruction and rehabilitation policy it encompasses all measures and the institutional initiatives taken by the government in the earthquake affected areas. The policy represented a framework of uh, ent entitlements and uh, prospects of development which reflected the vision of the successful reconstruction and rehabilitation plan. The role of NGOs, that is non-government organizations, is very important in the case of earthquakes. The strength lies in the manpower, informality in operations and valuable human resources. The ability to reach out to the communities and the sensitivity to local traditions is as an asset in such situations. Mihirbat has uh, written a report on various uh, initiatives in Gujarat titled Down to Earth. In this work, he throws light on the various developments that have taken place after the earthquake in Gujarat. According to him, various people have come up with help for the people suffering from the earthquakes in Gujarat. This include the International Fund for Agricultural Development, government organizations, etc. Now, in Gujarat, there is the potential to shape future disaster response and developments. The International Fund for Agriculture Development helped the Self-Employed Women's Association. Gujarat Women's Economic Development Corporation started to provide many practical lessons in regenerating local economies and artisan markets. Uh, this all proved that the 
coordination between different parties is needed in the matter of earthquakes also. Now we will move on to the fourth paragraph of the essay. Indian coasts are highly vulnerable to tropical cyclones and the consequent recurrent loss of life and property. It is now well recognized that by taking long and short term mitigation measures, the loss of life and property can be minimized. Hazard risk mitigation is the key behind a sustainable development. One of the most successful means of reducing loss of human lives during cyclones is the provision of cyclone shelters. In a densely populated coastal areas, the large-scale ev uh, evacuations are not always feasible. Community buildings and buildings be used for gathering of large number of persons, like schools, hospitals, prayer halls, etc., can be used as cyclone shelters. These buildings can be so designed so as to provide a blank facade with a minimum of uh, apparatus in the direction of the prevailing wind. The shorter side of the building should face the storm. Alternately, these buildings can be designed on a circular or ellipsoidal plan so as to impart least wind resistance. Education is a key component to improving mitigation strategies. Citizens need to know the signs behind the risk they face and what can be done to reduce the risk. Emergency response officials, policymakers, and construction workers need to be educated on the wisdom and proper techniques for implementing mitigation plans and policy. Earth beams and green belts can be used and and in front of these buildings to reduce the impact of the storm. These shelters should be located in relatively elevated areas with the provision for community kitchen, water supply and sanitation. Rows of strong rooted trees with need needle-like leaves are planted in the direction of facing the wind. The trees in the first few rows are provided fence the support to save them from being uprooted. These shelter belts can be grown all over the coastal area. Tropical cyclones are the worst natural hazards in the tropics. The large revolving vertices in the atmosphere extending horizontally from 150 to 1000 kilometers and vertically from the surface from 12 to 14 kilometers. Uh, these are intense low pressure areas. They generally move 300 to 5,000 kilometers per day over the ocean. While moving over the ocean, they pick up energy from the warm water of the ocean and some of them grow into a devastating intensity. The main dangers from cyclones are very strong winds, rains and high storm tides. Most of the causalities are caused by coastal inundations by storm tides. This is often followed by heavy rainfall and floods. Storms cause the greatest destruction. Although one cannot control cyclones, the effect of cyclones can be mitigated through effective and efficient mitigation policies and strategies. A brief description of the same is given below. Installation of early morning warning systems, developing communication infrastructure, developing shelter belts, developing community cyclone shelters, construction of permanent houses, training and education, land use control and settlement planning. Now we will move on to the last concluding paragraph of the essay. Even with all our technology and the inventions that make modern life so much easier than it once was, it takes just one big natural disaster to wipe all that away and remind us that here on earth we are still at the mercy of nature. Natural disasters hit at all in the society without any discrimination, rich and poor. But in reality, it is the poor who are the worst sufferers. 
One of the most important tasks buffer us is to introduce a culture of prevention and disaster managers in all communities at all levels. The culture must be disseminated so that all people in the society can become alert and become aware so that they can take some prevention measures in the case of any emergency or before the disaster strikes. So we have finished discussing the essay question. Now we will move on to the paragraph question. The first one is, write a note on floods in India. I have also included another paragraph within this paragraph that is, explain flood mitigation measures. Answer. Floods occur when an extreme volume of water is carried by rivers, creeks and many other geographical features into areas where the water cannot be drained adequately. Often, during times of heavy rainfall, drainage systems in residential areas are not adequate or unchecked. The civil development severely impacts the functionality of an otherwise acceptable drainage system. Flood causes extremely large number of fatalities in every country, but due to India's extremely high population density and often underdeveloped standards, a large amount of damages and many deaths occur. India witnesses floods due to ex excessive rain, which then result in overflow of rivers, lakes, and dams, which adds to cause large amount of damage to people's lives and property. In the past, India has witnessed many, many of the largest, most catastrophic floods, causing irreparable damage to people's livelihood, property, and a crucial infrastructure. According to recent World Disaster Reports, the percentage of occurrences of floods is highest, that is 43 percentage, with 3062 occurrences of the total disasters during 1995 to 2015, followed by storms, that is 28 percentage, with the 2018 occurrences. Ketharnath and Kashmir floods teach us some very important lessons which may go a long way in the management of flood disasters. The first lesson is that the climate change is a reality and we need to prepare for more frequent and severe hydrometeorological hazard in the coming years. India's summer monsoon has always been variable and has a Often precipitated floods, especially in the basins of the great Himalayan rivers. But experts say that a combination of global warming, unplanned urban growth, and environmental degradation is increasing flood risk in India. New studies show that extreme precipitation events are on the, risk, on the rise in large parts of India, especially multi day deluge that lead to large-scale floods. Warmer temperatures are also steering of glacier melt in the Himalayas, which is projected to increase flow rates in the Ganges and Brahmaputra rivers. As importantly, destruction of mountains and hills, as well as development of uh, floodplains and uh, marshes, are exacerbating risks as was seen in last year's uh, historic floods in the southern state of Kerala. Those floods were caused by extreme rainfall and a mismanagement of dam reservoirs, but, main, but mining and the construction in the western guts, a major hill range contributed to damaging landslides. The floods in August 2018 took 483 lives, affected 5.4 million people, and it temporarily shut down the state's new airport, which was built on a flood plain. Flood mitigation approaches fall into two categories, structural and non-structural. Structural forms of mitigation Mitigate harm by reconstructing landscapes. They include flood walls, sea walls, floodgates, uh, uh, levees, and uh, 
Evacuation roads. Non-structural measures reduce damage by removing people and property out of risk areas. They include elevated structures, property uh, buyers, permanent uh, re relocation, zoning, subdivision, and a building codes. Structural solutions have lost popularity over time as all dams and uh, floodgates have failed. Now we will move on to the next paragraph question that is enumerate the causes and methods of prevention of landslides. Answer. A landslide is defined as the movement of a mass of a rock, debris or earth down a slope. Landslides are a type of mass uh, wasting which denotes any downslope movement of soil and a rock under the direct influence of gravity. The term landslide encompasses by modes of slope movement, falls, topples, slides, struts and flows. These are further subdivided by the type of geological material, bedrock, debris or earth. Debris flows, commonly referred to as uh, mud flows or mudslides, and rock falls are examples of common landslide types. Landslides triggered by human activities are on the rise around the world, and India is among the most affected countries, accounting for at least 28% such events over the last 12 years, according to a study. Landslides are natural hazards that often happen without warning and cause a huge loss of property and life across the world. However, with a staggering 11,000 deaths in the last 12 years, India tops the globe in landslide deaths. According to the Geologic Survey of India, GSI, in the year 2017, 12 landslides were reported in India. This year, the GSI has listed 23 events till August, the most since 2013, with the majority of occurrences in Northeast Indian states and in Kerala, which witnessed its worst floods in a century. Landslide mitigation refers to several man-made activities on slopes with the goal of lessening the effect of landslides. Landslides can be triggered by many, sometimes say, concomitant causes, in addition to shallow erosion or reduction of shear strength caused by seasonal rainfall. Landslides may be triggered by anthropoic activities, such as uh, adding excessive weight above the slope, digging at the mid-slope, or at the foot of the slope. Often, individual phenomena join together to generate instability over time, which, go, uh, which often does not allow a reconstruction of the evolution of a particular landslide. Uh, therefore, landslide asset mitigation measures are not generally classified according to the phenomenon that might cause a landslide. Instead, they are classified by the sort of slopes stabilization method used. Geometric methods in which the geometry of the hillside is changed, in general, the slope. Hydrological methods in which an attempt is made to lower the groundwater level or to reduce the water content of the material. Chemical and mechanical methods in which attempts are made to increase the shear strength of the unstable mass or to introduce active external forces, example anchors, rock or ground nailing, or passive, example structural valves, or piles or reinforced ground to counteract the destabilizing forces. Now we will discuss the last paragraph question, that is, uh, what is drought? Mention the causes and the consequences of droughts. Answer. 
A drought is an event of prolonged shortages in the water supply, but uh, atmospheric, that is below average precipitation, surface water or groundwater. A drought can last for months or years or may be declared after as few as 15 days. It can have a substantial impact on the ecosystem and agriculture of the affected region and harm to the local economy. Annual dry seasons in the tropics significantly increase the chances of a drought developing and subsequent bushfires. Periods of heat can significantly worsen drought conditions by hastening evaporation of water vapor. The agonizing and often exhausting wait for the monsoon has long inspired India's writers and poets. But it is the country's farmers who know all too well the impact a delayed or indeed a failed monsoon can have on millions of lives. Today, millions of farmers hit by droughts and crop failure and are struggling to stay alive. Since 2015, India has been experiencing widespread drought conditions. In fact, some 600 million people in India are presently facing high to extreme water stress. According to the government's own report, India is facing its worst ever water crisis. The report by Premier Policy Research Center NITI Ayog, Niti Ayog, that is Niti Ayog, says there by 2030, the country's water demand is projected by to be twice the available supply. But all that is in the future. Today, millions of farmers hit by drought and a crop failure are struggling to stay alive. More than 80% of districts in the states of Karnataka and 70% in the state of Maharashtra have been declared drought affected. More than 6,000 tankers supply water to nearly 15,000 villages and amlets in Maharashtra alone. Drought mitigation measures include a large number of factions which can be grouped into three broad categories. Supply increase, demand reduction, and a drought impact minimization. Each category affects the physical, economic, and societal impacts of drought in different ways. We require advanced preparation of both long-term actions oriented to reduce the vulnerability of water supply systems and short-term actions to be, take, to be taken during the drought period. The role of a drought monitoring system and an appropriate institutional framework for effective drought management can also be highlighted. Drought is a unique natural hazard, which through its multifaceted characteristics causes damage to ecology and economy. Mitigation of drought requires a dedicated policy involving precautionary and, uh, compact and compatible measures. Now we have finished discussing all the question and answers from the chapter Disaster Management. In the next class, we will discuss the poem The Truth About the Floods, written by Nizim Ezekiel.